Well, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us today. So as you well know, we're going to discuss about time zero. So especially on the iPad and iPhone. And then we're going to find out how to integrate the time zero app with all the digital products. So me, I'm Nico. As you can hear, I've got a strong French accent. I work for Digital Yacht. We're not a French company. We are a UK and US based company. So we do IS, enemy interfaces, marine PC, all sorts of things related to marine electronics. And then here we've got Daniel, who works at Time Zero, and now he's going to start the, the webinar. Yeah, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Daniel Joram. I'm the West Coast and Gulf Coast sales manager here in the US. Um, I think also on our, our chat there, I've got our East Coast sales manager as well with us today. Um, yeah, so uh, Time Zero, depending on where you're at uh, in the world, you know, you may be more familiar with the Noble Tech brand here in the U.S. or Maxi in Europe. Um, and we have a, you know, pretty broad range of products from our iPad and iPhone apps now um, to our PC navigation software that we've been running for close to 30 years um, in various uh, formats, as well as some port security and other, other stuff that we get into. Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about TZ iBoat, um, which is the current iPad and iPhone app, um, so iOS devices, and, um, and specifically, yeah, how we're gonna integrate that with the digital yacht products and then some of the other cool features that we do. Um, you know, one of the things that just came up in the, the chat, you know, what are the key differences between TZ iBoat and, you know, Navionics or iNavX, um, you know, a lot of the things that we do, you know, I think we have the, the best chart engine on the market. I mean, this is the same back chart engine that we have in our, in our full PC plotters. You know, we can integrate with radar, which nobody else can do. We can integrate with um, AIS a lot easier and a lot uh, better than a lot of other apps. Um, we have integrated weather, integrated tides and currents. We have, you know, a whole host of features that we'll get into. So, um, yeah. So for those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, one of the big things that we have is, uh, and the reason why I'm going to start with this uh, is because it ties into a couple of other products from digital yachts that are pretty important, which is our ecosystem. So in addition to our cloud or sorry, our, into our iPad app, the, the data that, you generate so marks routes uh, waypoints boundaries photos and um, a new object for us which is a, a catch which is a fishing object uh, can all seamlessly integrate across a bunch of different platforms so um, you know your pc app your fruno mfd uh, and also our cloud web service and you know, one of the big things that's important is the ability to connect all these devices wirelessly. And so that's where the, the digital yachts Wi-Fi gateways are going to uh, be really important. Um, and also internet access, you know, 10 years ago, that wasn't that big a deal, but I don't think I've sailed anywhere in the last three years that I wasn't within GSM, you know, sail range here in the Pacific Northwest or Canada or Alaska that, um, that you know at some point i couldn't uh, log into the internet with the device and so we do some cool stuff like our new anchor watch and we do position reporting so your friends can and family can keep track of you um, as well as being able to use our our cloud service for route planning at home and backing up your marks and stuff like that Um, and then uh, for any of our Fruno customers, the new cloud service, just as a reminder, isn't compatible with our some of the first generation uh, Navnet products or the first generation Time Zero Touch products either. So, you know, if you uh, if you want to connect your iPad to one of our MFDs, one of the Fruno MFDs, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, you can use one of the, the built-in uh, hotspot from the MFD, or um, if you have bad coverage or it's down below decks and you wanna get the, a better signal up on deck, uh, one of the digital yachts Wi-Fi gateways uh, works really well. Um, and the other nice thing about that is then we'll actually get NMEA data onto the, the, um, the Wi-Fi network. So you'll be able to get position and AIS targets and things like that. Uh, course over ground, speed over ground, um, 
the um, sentences that we're going to bring in, even if you have an NMEA 2000 system, we're going to be using just a, about 10 or 12 different um, standard ONA3 sentences. So the digital yachts gateway is going to translate that to, um, to ONA3. And then we're also going to synchronize our user objects. So if you have two iPads on the same uh, gateway, they'll be able to talk to each other. So you can make a route on one iPad, it'll show up on the, the other iPad. You can make adjustments to your route, things like that. And then the other nice thing is, um, you know, because you've uh, backed everything up onto your iPad, if you don't have internet access or an internet connection or a cellular iPad, uh, when you go home to Wi-Fi uh, with a internet connection, it's gonna back all of our marks and everything up to the cloud. So even if you have an issue, you're not gonna lose your data. Um, you can download stuff later onto a different um, iPad. Once you, if you get a new one or you activate it on a phone, all that's going to um, to download automatically. Um, you know, one of the the other great features is having one of the 4G connects. So being able to have internet access on your boat and internet on your devices at the same time you're connected to your navigation network allows you to take advantage of that real-time cloud synchronization, but then also uh, streaming chart downloads, streaming satellite photos downloads. Um, and, uh, you know, the other great thing that we have is a, a pretty good weather download as well. So <clears throat> uh, one thing to note um, as a protection. So if you, you know, have two devices on the same network, but they're, you know, yours and your friends, um, they're not automatically going to share that data back and forth. So you're not going to worry about, you know, your marks getting corrupted or, you know, your secret phishing spots getting hijacked by your friends. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our MFDs, you know, they need to be logged in. And so, you know, having access from that gateway is going to be a great way to do that. And then the nice thing, again, you know, if your uh, devices are staying on board the boat, you've got internet access, you can make changes uh, to those routes at home. Um, and then you'll also be able to see those when you go back down to the boat the next time when you fire back up the system. And then I believe, here's a quick view of our, um, Cloud access for those of you that have our iPad app but haven't had a chance to log in to our online viewer. Um, this is a, a, a quick video on that. In the US, uh, we give uh, NOAA raster charts as a background image, but everywhere else, it's going to be a basic um, uh, cartography with uh, satellite photos. Um, so I'll have a quick look here. That makes this a nice route planning tool. Um, with the new version, uh, there's a question in the chat about when our anchor watch is coming out. And that should be uh, within the next month or two. Um, we just rolled out uh, version 2.1 and that's coming in 2.2. I've got the beta feature there and I can demonstrate that uh, a little bit later. But one of the nice things about that in the cloud service is that, uh, you know, let's say you go for a hike, you've got your iPad on the boat um, you'll be able to log in and see position information, wind speed, depth, anything that the iPad is reporting back to the cloud server. Um, and the other cool thing about that is we'll actually be able to send you an email or an SMS or a text message uh, if you lose connection or your anchor starts dragging and things like that. So the, the web browser is going to be a, um, a pretty nice uh, companion to our, to our suite of software. So. This is a quick demonstration of um, one of the phishing check objects. So that you know you be able to log, you know where you, where you made a catch, and then we'll pull in some background information from our weather service about um, oxygen levels and tides and stuff like that.
So anyway, that's just a quick um, overview of our, our cloud service and sort of our, you know, ecosystem. Uh, specifically with TZI Boat, um, you know, one of the main advantages for iPad navigation is the ability to connect it to a Furuno radar. Um, Furuno's got the only Wi-Fi radar on the market, uh, and it's cheap. You know, it's thousand bucks somewhere in that range. Um, I did some initial testing with it on our boat, and it was amazingly good. Um, you know, I come from a commercial navigation background, being able to you know have a uh, radar wirelessly on my iPad with AIS target overlay and heading overlay was really, really cool. Um, so there's a couple of different ways uh, that you can connect to the uh, radar. First, you need to, um, you know, purchase both the radar and the radar module in the app. And then you need to get it GPS position. Even if you don't have one of the digital yacht gateways, you can still get position off your iPad and you can still connect it to the radar. Um, you know, you'll get uh, radar overlay even if you don't have any other sensors, but uh, where it really shines is when you can add in, you know, AIS targets, uh, heading, um, and then other, uh, other information. How about that, um... Yeah, you have received a question again on the Q&A. Uh, let's see here. Anchor Watch. Um, is that, right, yeah. yeah. That one or is there another one? But the Raymarine Axiom Plotter. Uh, that may have just gone to you. I don't see that yeah, in my the chat. The question is, can you hook up my iPad at time zero iBot to my Raymarine Axiom Plotter? Uh, I do not know. Um, what if they have a, a Wi-Fi in the back end? That's where one of the um, you know enemy A two thousand gateways would be really useful. Um, you'll be able to get all the nav data that's um, being put out by the plotter. Uh, you won't be able to synchronize routes with any of the other manufacturers. We you know we're a Fruno partner company, so the synchronization will work with the uh, you know TZ Touch two and TZ Touch three Fruno MFDs, but not any of the other brands. Is that the same case if you have any BNG chart plotter or Remarine chart plotter? If they have built in Wi Fi inside, it means mm -hmm. it doesn't work with the Remarine or BNG app. It wouldn't work with Time Zero or any other navigation apps. Yeah. And Daniel, we have received another question. Mm -hmm. Is it Time Zero working with a new M1 chip for Mac? Uh, yeah, and on, you know, I've got probably the cheapest iPad that the company could buy me. You know, it's just a real basic cell card so you get a GPS in it. But um, looking at these on the new iPad Pro is amazing. And even my new, you know, um, you know, iPhone 11, it's awesome. So it works really, really well. All right, so there's a good example of, you know, radar overlay. Um, and again, this is something that uh, is pretty unique to us. Um, to make it work, uh, what you're gonna need to do is have a Wi-Fi gateway that um, will allow you to work um, in what we call client mode. So the Digital Yachts gateway is going to join the network of the Fruno radar. And the iPad is also going to join the network of the Fruno radar. Um, and what we like to do for this is use the UDP feature. So that means it's just broadcasting its NMEA data over Wi-Fi, and we don't have to know the IP address of the gateway. Uh, all we have to know is the uh, app um, and uh, uh, the the Immune to Wi-Fi gateway. Yeah, all we need is the the uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, Wi-Fi um, password and Wi and Wi-Fi login there. Which is um, easy to do with our products actually. You can <laughs> easily merge to any other Wi-Fi network on board when you configure the products. Just scan for existing network on board, and you can easily join it. Yeah. Um, so it's not necessary, the, there was a question in the chat there, uh, whether it's necessary to have a, a Wi-Fi with a built-in GPS. So it's, if you want it to work without a Wi-Fi, uh, an NMEA gateway, then you don't, um, then you need to have one. 
but if you're only going to connect it on a on a platform that has you know one of the digital yachts gateways there's no need to have the built-in gps or or a sim card um, yes because our animated wi-fi gateway are going to take the gps data from your onboard instrument and will feed the gps positions as well as is depth everything you got on board into mm -hmm. the time zero app on your software etc yeah and so the the trick is when you're hooking these up um you know you need to have a gateway that will go into what we call client mode or can join something else because the fruno radar will only work as a as an access point it's only going to broadcast a um a wi-fi network Um, if you don't have a radar, um, you know, the, any of the uh, digital yachts gateways will, you know, provide that Wi-Fi network on the boat. You don't need to have um, any, uh, you know, internet access. You just need to, you know, have a small, um, small network. So either the NMEA 2000, uh, like the NavLink 2 or the ON83 devices and and the no, NMA 2000, the Navling 2, if you guys have any NMA 2000 network on board, is actually a plug and play product. So it's the only NMA 2000 Wi Fi server with a drop NMA 2000 cable. So you just plug the cable onto your NMA 2000 backbone, it's going to take its power from your backbone, create the Wi Fi, and that's it. And then you can configure the Navling 2 to act as a client and to join your Furino radar or to act as an access point and just to be act as an enemy to Wi-Fi gateway and to send all your enemy 2000 data onto the app, IS, dev, wind, etc., IS, all those data. But if you don't have any enemy 2000 on board and if you have enemy 0183, we got the WLN30. It has three inputs and outputs and you can configure each enemy 0183 input speed, so 4,800 boards which is the enemy 0183 speed for child plotter instrument. Or you can configure an enemy 0183 input at 38,000 baud, which is the enemy 0183 speed for IS. And then this product is going to multiplex, which is like combining all those data, all those enemy 0183 data, and send over the Wi-Fi all your data onto the app. So that's the two enemy to Wi-Fi gateway we do at Digital Yacht. And Enemy 2000 is very easy to install. However, for Enemy 183, you need to know exactly what you got on board, how the wires, etc. But if you go on our blog on digitalio.net, we have actually listed all the most popular chart cutter, IS, etc. And you can see exactly how to hook up the WN30 to your existing Enemy 183 equipment on board. Yeah, one of the um, important things from our point of view that the Digital Yachts products do really well is they allow for device-to-device um, -device communication. Um, and so that's a really important feature. Um, you know, having a good, robust Wi-Fi server in one of these chips or one of these boxes is, um, is really important. And not everything that we've tested since we've launched the app has met these standards. You know, being able to have um, also, you know, correct you know basic stuff like dhcp address assignment so that when you have a you know a pc that's joined it and your uh, iphone and your ipad that you know all the devices are able to talk and there's no limit um you know i know that you know some other products you know you can bump into you know maybe only one tcp client or only handles two or three udp clients at a time uh, and that starts getting really frustrating as you have multiple devices on the network so that's really, that's something pretty important actually that, uh, that these two devices do really well. And the Wi-Fi is stable, as you say. The mm -hmm. Wi-Fi is password protected, which is not the case of most of the animate Wi-Fi gateway in the market. Yeah, I mean, and then the other option is, you know, what do you do about AIS? Um, you know, so the, there's a couple of different projects that, um, that uh, Digital Yacht has either the, you know, the, can, the, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can, talk I about it. Yeah. yeah, so basically, for, if you don't have any IS on board, and you can actually get an IS with an enemy to Wi-Fi gateway. So we got two products. So here's the EIS takes, 
which is basically an entry range IS transponder with wife only. So it's a transponder, it means transmit your position as well as it receive all the, all the IS near you. It comes an external GPS because every IS transponder needs to have its own GPS antenna and then it has a built-in Wi-Fi. So you just connect your tablet onto the Wi-Fi and you will receive IS and GPS positions on two times zero. However, if you want something more developed, complete, we got the IT5000, which is actually the Rolls Royce of IS in the market, the most complete IS transponder. So the class B plus, it means instead of being a class B only, it transmit up to three seconds instead of 30 seconds for a basic class B. And also it's power as five watts instead of two watts. So you get a better range of transmissions. It can be tracked by satellite for marine traffic. It's also uses SOTMA technology like a class A, which is used by cargo, fishing boats, etc. So the, the IT5000, it also have a VHF splitter. So you're going to use only one VHF antenna instead of a few. So I know some of you have heard that using a VHF splitter is not a good thing, but actually a VHF splitter can be used if it's a zero-loss active splitter, which is a case of a VHF splitter, but most of the VHF splitter on the market are not. That's why you can read a lot, especially on Pembo or any other newspaper. Like if you use a bad quality VHF splitter, it can actually affect your VHF radio can even burn your IS transporter. There have been a few cases like that. But if it's a zero-loss active VHF splitter, you can use one VHF antenna and valve. You will not get any interferences with your VHF radio IS transponder. And then finally, what is interesting with the IT5000, it has NME 0183 and NME 2000. So it means you can connect all your instrument equipment on both NME and all the data of your instrument will be transmitted over the Wi-Fi. So with the IT5000 Wi-Fi, you will, you will receive on time zero IS, GP, GPS, and all your instruments, data, depth, speed, etc. And if yeah, you and if for IS, feel free to ask, and we're going to reply to all your questions at the end of, of this webinar. Yeah, and with the, you know, if you have an older AIS unit, um, you know, having, again, going back to one of the, you know, multiplexers, you know, is a good option as well. So a couple of different ways to slice it. Exactly. And if you don't know exactly which products you need or what do you have with us, enemy on it free, feel free to contact us. We have a team based near Boston and other team based in Europe and the UK. We are going to tell you exactly the right product you need. We're here for support, which wires need to connect, etc. Products are easy to install and to configure. All right. Um... So let's take a look at the iPad app. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my iPad here. So just give me a quick second. There we go. All right. So this is TZ iBoat. Um, and again, this is the, uh, the new version. So one of the things that I really like is our AIS presentation. Um, you know, find this, you know, pretty similar to our, our PC application and also, you know, what we do with the Fruno MFDs. Uh, really easy to tell what's a dangerous target, what's a class A target, which are the blue vessels. Uh, class B targets, which are the green vessels right off the bat. You can click on any one of them to get information on what they are, where they're going, things like that. And this is CPA, TCPA. Yep. And then you also have the ability to turn on a graphic TCPA. Uh, so you'll see, you know, what your closest point of approach is for any dangerous targets. We don't, you know, have or any non-dangerous targets. We don't have that on by default because, you know, in busy areas, it can get pretty cluttered on the screen. Um, so we'll turn that guy off. So, um, you know, zooming in, it's a little, you know, 
tough when we're doing this over Zoom to see exactly how fast this is, but it's super smooth, um, really easy to pinch and zoom in and out. You can uh, rotate in 3D by swiping up, uh, and then you can also um, rotate and pan around. So this is also showing our streaming satellite photos, um, you know, something that many of their apps are doing. Um, full 3D chart engine, uh, you know, and talking about what, um, you know, some of the other, uh, um, you know, features are versus some of the other apps. The ability to switch between uh, vector and raster charts. So we can just, with the layers button, click over. Um, we'll look at raster charts. I didn't have any downloaded for that area, but it's going to stream them wirelessly. So I can, even as I zoom out, it's going to, you know, stream that data if you don't have it and then save it for you. Um, and then we also give you, um, you know, because right now the app is now free to download. So you, you'll start off with uh, what we call um, open street maps. And this is good anywhere. It's a quirky little feature, but I've been really enjoying having these in the app when I go hiking. So we'll go out, we'll go sailing for the weekend. We'll get some place to anchor up. And, you know, as I look at one of the state parks or something like that, I'll get to see all the hiking trails. Um, on the island. So that's a really uh, cool feature that's available that we started out just by giving away the maps for free, but it actually works out really well. So um, <clears throat> a couple of the other features that I was talking about, um, the, you know, so we've got, you know, both vector and raster charts, satellite photos, and then we have a fantastic weather server. Um, and so this is real time uh, weather information or forecast information streaming right down to our device. And um, if I want, I can go in and we have a couple of different weather models available. So we have the icon model uh, and then the uh, North American uh, high resolution model as well. So we have those three models available in the app uh, as a, you know, we give you the GFS one, which is the global model for free. And then um, we let you, um, you know, subscribe to the other ones. And then lastly down there, we've got the ability to turn on and off uh, tidal height stations, current information. We can turn on and off AIS targets if we want, um, routes, marks, boundaries, those kind of things. So, uh, you know, this is where one of those uh, 4G connects becomes super useful because if you don't have a, a, a cellular connection on your iPad or, you know, they've got external antennas that goes with those um, devices, we can only get a lot better range. I think, Nico, you were saying, what, 20 miles on those? Yeah, roughly around 20 miles offshore. You get a very fast. It's fantastic. Internet. You can do Netflix, streaming, whatever. It's actually super fast. And yeah. also the point, there's something I didn't tell during the presentations, with a 4G Connect, which is um, a 4G booster with external antennas, you can also add one of our enemy interface, which is called iCommunicate. This will take all your enemy data, and then this box will be connected to 4G Connect. So that means under the same Wi-Fi network, you will get a fast internet access up to 20 miles, and then as well, you're going to receive all your navigation data, IS, GPS, and so on, under the same Wi-Fi, so you don't need to switch from one of the from one of the Inuit Wi-Fi gateway network or your 4G network is all under the same Wi-Fi network. Um, yeah, and so let's take a quick look at how to set that up. I've connected to a UDP server here, um, and so you just click on the little time zero icon, go into settings, and all the way down at the bottom is the initial setup. And so this is where you know you're either going to put in um, you know, the UDP port of the uh, Wi-Fi gateway. And I think, Nico, you're saying, yeah. Um, yeah, 2000 is the default there. All our products use the same UDP and TCP, but if you want, you can also change it. Yeah. The interface. I use that port for something else here at work. So I've, I've switched that. Uh, but you can see, you know, GPS data. You can see AIS information coming through. Um, if you need to help troubleshoot something, you know, you can pause it. You can copy all of it and send it to us if there's a question. Uh, yeah, and we have the ability to go oops, uh, between UDP or TCP. Um, you know, our general preference is UDP. There's less client limitations. Um, you don't have to know the device ID, uh, especially if 
you've got it connected to a, a DHCP server, things like that. So just simplifies it a little bit. Um, and then, um, you know, once you have that, you just swipe over from the side with two fingers there. And you can get our nav data box. And this is where you'll be able to go in and add, um, you know, course over ground information, heading. You'll be able to see all the nav data that we allow you to, to there. So you just click on add. So if I have a speed through the water sensor, I can add that. Um, um, I have wind speed, uh, wind direction, both uh, apparent or true. Um, and then, um, you know, we have a whole bunch of autopilot information or um, bearing to waypoint information. At this time, we don't output any um, autopilot sentences, you know, having a good stable connection over Wi-Fi to do that autopilot output isn't something that, you know, we're super comfortable with right now. But, um, you know, that's where having either a PC or uh, a, a Fruno chart plotter hooked up to your um, uh, to your autopilot. And that's what I have. I mean, the setup on my boat is I have an MFD down below that also has my sounder on it. I've got TZ iBoat on deck and I've got my PC running. Um, and, you know, even working for the company and being really comfortable with Time Zero Professional, I end up just pulling out my phone, making a route real quick, and then um, going from there. So that's all of the nav data that we have. Um, and then just hit close and you're back to your regular screen. Just kind of take a quick second and kind of read through some of the questions here. Uh, if there's anything that's... Yeah, I've received a question I'm, I'm going to reply. Yeah, yeah, so Martin, you have asked for those useful slides. We are, we are recording the webinar right now. And tomorrow we are going to publish this webinar on YouTube, Facebook, and also we're going to send you an email with a link, a YouTube link, if you want to watch again the, the webinar. Um, yeah, Philip, I'll have to, um, I'm reading your question here about tides. I will have to get back to you on that. Um, uh, it's not something I know off the top of my head. Um, Uh, if you have Maxi on your PC, so either Time Zero Professional or Time Zero Navigator, the app is free, but you do have to purchase the charts. Um, the charts range between 19 and 60 bucks, depending on where you're at. Um, and the reason why is there a different chart license. So we pay royalties to either CMAP or the hydrographic offices that we're getting charts from. And so we have to, um, you know, uh, they're all different. Um, Time Zero Navigator 3.3. Um, so to have them talk to each other, you do need to upgrade uh, to version four. Uh, you'd get an updated weather version in, in TZ Navigator, and then yeah, you'll have everything synchronized. And one of the things that we spend a lot of time doing, and it's not super sexy, um, but it's uh, really important is how we've handled um, our user objects. So marks, routes, waypoints, tracks, um, but specifically things that you're gonna create, the marks, routes, and uh, waypoints, and having duplicate objects is really um, a pain. So if you get some waypoints from somebody, you know, and they're the, the, the same thing that you've already imported, it's not going to re-import that same stuff. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free yeah. to contact us. Huh? Yeah, so uh, I kind of touched on this. If you have TZ Navigator, the uh, you will have to pay for charts for your area. The weather options are free in both TZ Navigator and um, uh, TZ iBoat. If you do purchase the subscription in TZ iBoat for the premium weather, that weather will also be available on the PC license. Uh, The uh, let's see here. So yeah, the uh, MFDs we we're talking about. So the Furuno TZ Touch Two and TZ Touch Three are the two uh, Furuno uh, chart plotters it works with. 
on the TZ Touch 2, it does need to be the latest version, which is version 7. Um, satellite data in Norfolk. Let me write that down. Um, Gary, if you can shoot me an email, I will um, uh, get back to you with some specific answers on that. I'd have to do a little bit of digging. Um, for the last questions but from Dennis, all time zero receives the IS signal from the iPad. Basically, if you got an IS receiver transporter on board, we use what we call an enemy to Wi-Fi gateway. This will take all your IS data and will feed your iPad on time zero app all those IS targets. And if you don't have any IS receiver or transponder, then you can take an IS transponder with built-in Wi-Fi and transmit automatically all your IS targets onto the app. Um. It's a question of the feature compatibility of TZ Navigator with Mac M1 ARM has been answered. Uh, yes. So um, in theory, and this is a ways off. Um, so yeah, so if you're running uh, one of the new Mac or uh, an older Mac and you're using VMware or preferably dual booting into a, a Windows mode, um, yeah, you'd be able to run TZ Navigator. Um, I think and i'm i want to say that you know in theory once um the m1 arm processor on the macbooks is available you'd probably be able to um bring tz about tz i vote over i do not have a timeline for that um and that's something i'd have to get with our developers on um and i'm not sure not sure on that side uh, one touch routing, um, it is a feature request and I think it's something that folks are working on, um, but it's not something that we have available today. And for the last, for George, for your questions regarding how to connect the NetLinked Enemy 2000 to the iPad, well, um, if you go on our digitalio.net, how to configure apps and software, we explain how to configure time zero, et cetera, with our products. And for Navlink 2, if you want to find out how to configure it, you go on YouTube and you write, configure Navlink 2, and we explain exactly how to change TCP, UDP, et cetera, and then how to connect to the navigation app. Yeah, and you know the, the basic way in our app is you need to connect your iPad to that wireless gateway. And so once you have the, um, you know, the Wi-Fi up and going. In the initial setup on the iPad, connect to NMEA gateway. You'll see uh, the selected Wi-Fi. So this is the Wi-Fi we have in the shop here and what the IP address is, of it is. And then by default, all of the um, digital yachts and Avalink products are gonna be uh, port okay. number 2000. So you would just, where I have uh, port 1002, you would type in 2000. And then um, you'll know that it's working because you'll get that scrolling data view there. Uh, so we did have a question about our anchor watch. So what I'm gonna do, I'll show you the new feature that's about to come out. Um, so hit the little three dots at the bottom here um, and you can select anchor watch. And we're gonna, the first time you do this, it's gonna pop up with a little splash screen from us that says um, you can do this remotely. So it's gonna take you to the cloud.mytimezero.com and it'll have you put in a, um, a, uh, a phone number if you want text messages. Uh, I think we're given 10 free SMS a month or email. And uh, we'll go maybe later. And then there's two options to either um, select how you're gonna position your anchor so you're either gonna point your iPad at the anchor and set it, or you can just use GPS if you're right there. And then when I zoom in, you'll see our new anchor watch. And since this demo is moving, I will uh, hit stop so it doesn't uh, just alarm. But um, what's cool about that is it will synchronize across the network to the next release of the Fruno um, chart plotter software. 
It will synchronize with our current release of Time Zero Professional and Time Zero Navigator. Um, and uh, yeah, same thing, ability to log into our website and see that or get a text message or email if you have an issue. Uh, let's see here, Thomas, if I use the routing option on TZ Navigator, can I easily transfer it to TZ iBoat on my iPad? Yes, um, and that's one of the big, uh, you know, uh, important features about having a Wi-Fi gateway that allows communication between two devices, like the Digital Yachts products. Um, what you would do is you would use the routing option um, once you've, so once you like your route, um, you will be able to see that uh, pop up on your iPad screen, and it would show up just like one of my other routes um, that I have. And um, uh, can I update, modify on the route on TZ? Yeah. So if you uh, want to, you can modify the um, the route so you can make changes to it. And because it's fully synchronized, it's going to um, uh, over Wi-Fi. So you don't need to be connected to the cloud for this to work. Um, you can make a adjustment to that route and it's gonna synchronize back to your PC. So, um, and that's what I do, you know, I've got the autopilot output from my PC so I can make an adjustment to the route. Um, and so I'll show you how we're gonna do that here. So we'll just go start. <clears throat> so new route. And you can keep making your route as long as you want. Um, a little check mark is going to end it and then activate. And that information, not just the route information, but the entire active route data. So uh, the fact that we're navigating to a waypoint is going to synchronize across the network there. Um, you can skip a waypoint if you want. You can move a waypoint if you need to. Um, and then stop navigation. And yeah, so that would work either with a regular route or with one of the um, 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 you know, polar file generated weather routes. Uh, outside Furuno, what is the most user-friendly MFD to hook up a TZ2? So- That's a tricky you know, one. Yeah, it is a tricky one. I wanna say actually the easiest one would probably be Garmin. And the reason why, is um, from the app, uh, you can export a route. So you can hit export. And if you have uh, Navionics or iNavX, um, you can actually import that route um, because you, know, you would need to export it as GPX, um, but we don't have any synchronization with any of their major manufacturers. So unfortunately, um, it's not as seamless as we uh, do with the Furuno chart plotters. Well, is there any other questions? Uh, that's it for today. Well, I think that will be it for today, right, Daniel? Yeah, you yeah, see? sounds good to me. Um, yeah, you've got our email addresses. I think um, you, know, you can always get a hold of us at uh, you know, on the marketing side, um, either in Maxi or uh, here in Noble Tech. Um, it's uh, you know sales at mytimezero.com, and they'll get directed to uh, somebody that can answer your question. Uh, Um, I have the raster chart for English Channel Hamburg. Uh, yeah, so we are, our map media, which is our cartography division is um, uh, using, uh, is providing the charting. Um, oops, hang on a second. Um, but uh, there is actually a way to uh, report chart discrepancies or issues from within the app. Uh, let's see if I can remember where that was mm -hmm. 
um, you can always contact support uh, from within the app there and, you know, screenshot the uh, chart in question and it'll get directed correctly to the correct person that's um, in charge of the, the cartography team. Well, I think that would be it for today. Huh? But yeah. on our side, if you have any questions on how to hook up your, your electronic system on board the TZ iBot app, feel free to contact Digital Yacht. We are running a virtual show at the moment on digitalyachtamerica.com or digitalyacht.co.uk. You can find out more about our products, answer to all your technical questions, etc. And most importantly, Daniel, thanks for your time today. It was great yeah, for sure. to talk about the, the app. My pleasure. Um, thanks for hosting this. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out. We'd be happy to answer anything else for you. All right. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. And speak soon. Have a good day, guys.